Um, uh, and uh, uh, usually Teresa Cooper uh, calls the member for to establish a quorum. Noel, will you do that for us today? Be happy to. Mike Cottle? Here. Yvonne Egan? Here. Barry Martin? Here. Chris Kaiser? Here. Rainer Mullins? Present. Mr. Chair, you have quorum. Full committee today. Thank you. The uh, number three item on, on the agenda is the review and approval of the pre previous meeting transcript. Uh, it was sent out in advance uh, by Charlie. So uh, uh, any, I'm assuming you all have read it or uh, familiar with it. Or is there any addition or changes to be made? Or and if not, will someone make a motion to approve it? This is Chris, I'll make that motion to approve. Second, Rainer. All right, motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All that opposed say no. And that appears to uh, uh, pass unanimously. And number four, we go to old business. And uh, first thing up is a report on the route crossover claims uh, clean up from July 1st, 2014 to present. Uh, Veronica, are you on, and would you like to take that on? Hi, good good uh, morning. Um, yes, I am on. Sorry, uh, Zoom required me to verify my my account, so it took me a few minutes. But um, good morning, everyone. Um, I am happy to provide uh, an update on the RAP work group. Um, we met on Tuesday. Um, we uh, reviewed a couple of uh, presentations that Gamewell prepared on the Kentucky Health Net new reporting mechanisms. Um, and so we will get that out to um, the, the TAC members. Um, we got uh, some really good feedback on that. Uh, what those do is um, it walks through how to access those reports. Um, it also talks about some changes that we're making um, based on feedback uh, that include being able to drop the report to an Excel spreadsheet, which I think will be very helpful to providers, um, and then uh, giving, give, giving providers access to the threshold information, which, is, which are those claim, those encounters from the MCOs that go onto a file that don't actually make it into our system. Um, and, and therefore, you know, do not generate a wrap. Uh, and then also um, there's one from the MCO perspective on how they can, they'll be able to pull their supplemental report and be able to see whether a wrap was generated because up until now um, they send the encounter and, and they don't know uh, until a provider calls them that um, a wrap wasn't generated. So we're giving a lot of transparency to both sides of um, to the provider and to the MCO so that they can um, be able to understand, you know, what hasn't generated a wrap. Um, we uh, looked through, and I'm, hold on, I'm gonna uh, pull up my cheat sheet here. Um, we um, uh, talk, talked a little bit more about, um, Again, finding ways to improve that, that reporting, including um, uh, there's a limit of 2,500 in, entries and so um, that it pulls down because it, it's, it's massive. Uh, and so we're working with providers on, um, you know, what, what are the ways they can better um, search to make sure it stays within the limit. And um, we created a tracking document so um, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of the RAP work group. It was our very first meeting was April 1st. Um, and um, what we've done is go back and um, track all of the issues that have been identified and all of the action that has been taken and all of the um, ones that remain outstanding. I, I will say that we've made a lot of progress and um, I, um, 
you know, I, the, the team of providers, MCOs and, and DMS um, and Gainwell, I think ha, have done a tremendous amount of work to, to improve the processes, the policies and uh, the communication. Um, so I, I think we definitely have, have made some milestones and achieved some outcomes. Um, we talked through, um, uh, uh, as a result um, of some discussion during the meeting, the MCOs are going to go back and have some um, conversation about uh, creating consistency um, and share best practices. Uh, and they're, so they're going to do that. And then we talked about having a follow-up meeting in about two months. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I think there's a, a sense that maybe we're, we've moved in the right direction and we'll try to continue to update as um, especially, you know, changes that we're making to Kentucky Health Net and just uh, report those through email updates. Um, uh, let's see. So I think that kind of is a good highlight of, of what was discussed. Uh, members, do you all have any questions of Yvonne? I'm um, excuse me, of Veronica. You you can ask Yvonne too, but Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, this is Chris. I, I I had a question, Veronica. So I, I'm just just wondering, as far as the work group, you know, when you all are you know discussing and everything, you know, the the RAP crossover claims and things like that, you know, ha has there been identified? I mean, actual. Um, problems that are causing the the rat to um, you know, that information, or is it that it is a combination of little things that leads to um, the rat payment not going to the FQs? Uh, so you went out a little bit, Chris, but I think I understand your question. And um, yeah, so I think we have identified specific problems. Um, and we are developing solutions to those. Um, and and the, the lessons that we're learning through this um, process, we are, so one of the things we, one of the um, deliverables from, from the work group is going to be a frequently asked questions, um, you know, some training documents about the process. Um, and we'll use, utilize the examples that have been shared throughout the work group meetings. Um, to help us explain, you know, so if you're getting this, uh, this is what's recommended that you do. Right. Um, and, and definitely, I think, um, discussing the errors the MCOs get on their encounters um, has helped us resolve a lot of them. I, I, I think I'm hoping that what we've seen is, you know, a, a significant decrease in the number of, um, I, I, I've seen it, <laughs> I don't know if it feels that way, but I've seen in the reports that we get that um, we're having um, fewer and fewer threshold errors. Um, and I think that's in part because we've, we've picked a, you know, we've really dug into why are mm -hmm. things, um, you know, why are they getting an error? Uh, and, and as we identify those, you know, I think some of it is that you're always going to have, um, um, you know, specific situations that deal with a provider um, or with an MCO. And, you know, those are kind of one offs that we'll still have to continue to, to work through. Um, but there is an expectation from the department that the MCO start, you know, are working with providers on resolving these. And, um, and sometimes it's an easy one, easy fix, and sometimes it's not, and we understand that, but they should be worked on because it's important that the providers are getting their wraps, you know, they're getting their payments timely and accurately. So, um, so even, you know, I think aside from the work group, uh, we're, we're definitely focused on making sure that this, this uh, remains a process that happens. Okay, just to follow up, Veronica, uh, do you all have kind of a timeline as far as when these deliverables will be made available to FQs? Um, um, so I, you know, I think we wanted to get a, a, into a really good place where we felt like um, maybe the lion's share of issues have been resolved. And I, I think we're getting there. Mm -hmm. 
So um, my guess is we'll start to work on those in maybe 60 days or so, a couple of months um, for us to pull all that together. It's something that we'll want to share, I think, with the work group members for you for them to take a quick look at um, and review to make sure, you know, does this make sense? Is this helpful? Um, you know, are there other things that could be added to it? And uh, so we'll want that kind of iterative process to really get a good to get, I think, um, something that's helpful to providers. So I, you know, what we might try to do is come up with something for the next work group meeting, which I said, you know, it's going to be in, I think we're going to do two months um, and then have that reviewed and, and maybe try to get something um, sent out and posted on our website after that. Uh, Veronica, <laughs> this Rainer, uh, you mentioned MCOs. Hi. Uh, I assume that the dental claims are also included that with the dental subcontractors of Isis and the other folks. Yep, that's correct. It, it'll include um, any subcontractors. And um, so there are specific efforts going on um, with the dental subcontractors right now. I know that MCOs are working very closely um, with the subcontractors and the providers to resolve those issues. And I think there's been, you know, I, I think it might be a little different uh, depending on the MCO as to where they are in that process, but I think that there's been some significant movement in that. Okay. Appreciate Yvonne, earlier you had a question uh, for, for Veronica. You shall have that question or has it been answered? No, I was just going to add a, an additional comment. Uh, I thought Veronica did an excellent job covering the items that we covered on Tuesday. Um, the other thing is that dealing with the blanket voids that when an NCO is doing retro fee schedule adjustments, trying to work with the NCOs to do an adjustment encounter versus a void that causes these massive recoups. I think that is still something, uh, hopefully with the NCOs getting together and sharing how one NCO has been successful in fixing that issue that they will share with the others and see if we can't eliminate that problem that many experience. Veronica, there's also a question in the comments in the chat from Carla. It says, can we see claims that are over a year or two old from these reports or, or will there be a time limit on the search in reference to data service on the claims? I am not aware of a time limit. Um, um, I will double check that and, and make sure we send that out to the group. But I, my understanding was that they could go back as far as the system goes back. And I, I do want to note, so the changes to, um, for the, the Excel spreadsheet um, goes into effect at the end of March, March 31st um, is when that goes into production. Okay, uh, Teresa Dodson of my staff has a question to Veronica. Okay. Um, let me just say that I was very pleased with the work group meeting on Tuesday, and I've been able to do some work um, since then on the report. I didn't have access before, so that was a problem on our side with administrative rights, but that's been corrected. Um, it would be very helpful in the search fields if we could do social security number and maybe by MCO, because the way our systems run the reports and when we have to report it to each MCO, it's a whole lot of um, Excel sorting and spreadsheets and tabs. So if I could bring down one whole MCO by range date, and sort back and then um, what I found is that where the member IDs are maybe not used standard across the board with the MCOs, a social security number for me would have been easier to, to sort and look for. I had them actually install a third screen in my office so I could work on all the reports. It was that extensive. Um, and then it hit me that if, if we if we could narrow down the, you know, the, the same uh, fields then that would help. So I would appreciate that consideration. Okay, I'll take that back to the team. Right, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chair Cottle, I'd like to echo. Go ahead. I'd like to echo Veronica's comments. I think our work group has has come a long way, and uh, it's uh, resolved a lot of ongoing issues. And I think it's like uh, with the agenda item it says report from work 
uh, from RAP crossover claims cleanup from July 2014 to present. I think we need to rename this agenda item and just maybe call it um, work uh, RAP work group update. Um, because now we're working on just uh, present and future issues. The past issues, I think those are going to have to be resolved by individual clinics. Um, I don't, I, we need to look at this as being present and future instead of uh, past because we're not going to be able to work too much on the past. Uh, we have the tools to do that individually, but as a, as a TAC, I think we need to focus on uh, keeping the work group um, viable and uh, continuing to work on processing issues for the future. That's just my opinion. Just, just call it a uh, uh, work group status report then or something that effect. Yeah, because we've agreed that we should still continue to have this work group. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yesterday uh, or whenever we had a work group call, uh, it it came to light that the, it would be really helpful for the MCO to get together and talk about issues uh, and try to be more consistent with their approach uh, from both the DMS and uh, provi uh, provider standpoint. Uh, so I was, I was uh, very happy to hear that uh, the MCOs are seizing that opportunity. Okay, Mr. Okay Chair. With the other committee members? This is uh, Chairman Mike. I, I do have just a, a comment to what Barry said. I, I guess I, I, I'm just wanting to understand, uh, while, I, while I do appreciate the work group is, is certainly focused on making corrections and tools and resources going forward, what, what are clinics um, supposed to do or what are they being told to do, advised to do in regard to to the actual uh, reconciliation itself for claims that they've got held from 2014 to for whatever date. I mean, um, yeah, I, I guess I just, I, I, I'm wondering, are clinics waiting for guidance to, you know, they have all of this information of claims that um, from their point of view, they've not received a wrap on from as far back as 2014. So. Are, you know, are, are they waiting to hear, you know, to, okay, what are we supposed to do? Because prior the prior reconciliation, you know, it was one of those things where um, we submitted something to DMS, they reviewed everything, ran it through their system, and then we came up with a number of what was owed, that kind of thing. So, so what are, what are clinics waiting on right now? Yeah, I, I think from, from the department's perspective, because we have been primarily focused on, and, and I think it's been my position that, you know, we've got to clean up the system. <laughs> we can't do anything unless we are all talking the same language. Um, and, you know, we, we, we build those um, relationships and, and communication, lines of communication. Um, and, and I think we really have established a good foundation for that. Um, a reconciliation back to 2014 is not something the department can do, but I think what we've done is establish at least the ability for, um, you know, as we improve the report that can be pulled out of Kentucky HealthNet and the information we're going to now be giving to the MCOs, I think is going to be a perfect opportunity for providers that um, honestly believe that they do not, they've not received a wrap. Um, for past claims is to start that conversation and, and have, um, and certainly the department is more than happy to help facilitate some of that um, and ensure that it's happening, you know, um, uh, but, you know, individual providers, I think at, at that point then should be communicating with the MCOs on, you know, um, this is something, and because the wrap didn't generate, it's because there was something wrong with the encounter and or the claim. So, um, you know, I think that require, that's gonna require additional work um, and it could be accomplished with the provider and the MCO communicating on those. As I understand what you uh, uh, said, Veronica, uh, the 
the uh, actual trying to clear up the uh, clean up the the RAP crossover claims is is uh, something the department doesn't see itself as being directly responsible for, but it's an issue between the MCOs and the providers uh, that the department would be a uh, what a mediator or on the sidelines or and and I don't mean to put words in your mouth. No, 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 it's okay. Uh, um, I I think what the department can do is ensure that um, the MCO is participating in those conversations. And if the MCO isn't, um, you know, that's where we can kind of step in and, and ensure that that's happening. Um, uh, so, um, and, and let me say, when I say that it's, it's all on the MCO and the provider, as things are discovered, and, the, and this is where an MCO can help us, that um, there was a problem with it getting in and it's something maybe the department, you know, it's our system. I'm not saying that we're not responsible for that because we are. <laughs> and that's where, you know, as those things get identified, certainly um, we play a role in that too. And we can be um, part of the conversation when that, when that gets identified. So in, in the next work group meeting then, can, can uh, uh, we set up a framework as to how that's going to happen so that we can start putting attention towards the, uh, uh, the issues? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. And to your point, Chris, that um, may, you know, maybe we should um, provide some communications about what the, what the next step is to reconcile um, um, past claims. Okay. Mr. So, Chair. Mr. Chair, may I say something? Go ahead, yes, sir. Uh, Veronica, I, just to kind of echo what Chris was saying, as an association, you know, our our bandwidth and communication only goes so far because, you know, we don't. There's 350 plus rural health clinics in the state of Kentucky, and they're not all members of the KPCA. So I think it would be really appreciated um, for that communication to maybe be put on the website so all of those entities. <laughs> that may not, you know, many of them may not even realize that that this is going on, or that there's a problem or that there's a work group because with with so many rural health clinics that are getting that PPS rate, um, you know, many of the, all of the CH, all the community health centers are part of our organization and get regular communication and things like that. Um, but I do think it would be helpful uh, to, to have that at least on the DMS website where all providers, you know, that are receiving the, the rate can can see it. I just want to- Absolutely. And I appreciate that. Um, definitely, and I, I think for the, the training and the FAQs that we develop, um, that will be shared with all providers. Um, and that's something we, you know, this conversation about reconciliation, you know, what does a provider do to, um, you know, to go back and reconcile past claims that didn't generate a wrap, you know, we'll have, I think, clear guidance in there about what are the steps that you should go through to do that. Okay, so for, for our next meeting, let's let's split this. Let's let's uh, put in a uh, new agenda item for uh, update from the uh, Medicaid work group. Uh, I have that noted, Mr. Chair. And also let's let's keep our existing one on report on the wrap crossover claims, understanding that those now are uh, basically two different things, and there will be report at uh, uh, by uh, Ms. Cecil to at the next. TAC meeting to uh, uh, talk to us about this framework as will be set up because between now and our next meeting, the work group will have met and discussed this and, and came out with some type of a direction or plan. Is that all right? I think that's fine, Mike. I just think that we somewhere we need to, to leave it up to the individual providers. Uh, as long as Medicaid has some kind of a a process for MCOs and the providers to talk specifically individually. Mm -hmm. As they tag, I think this is something that we're going to have to leave up to the providers to work with the MCOs and DMS because we beat this dead horse way too long. And I think now we have a process in place with the with DMS and the MCOs with this cleanup and. Uh, I think it's time for the providers to start using uh, these tools. And I, I'm, I feel like DMS can probably enlighten them as a whole, 
better. But I think as far as on attack, we need to eventually get this off the agenda item because we're not going to be able to go anywhere as a group with the reconciliations. Let's see if we can get the framework up before we uh, drop that so that uh, yeah. individual providers will have a uh, path to, uh, to follow, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, there's no other comments. Uh, in the last uh, meeting we were talking about, there was a focus around a visa and the issues related to it as a subcontractor. Has anything come forth beyond that? Because I know a visa is kind of a sore spot with a lot of us. Uh, if that's to DMS, <laughs> uh, um, I'm sorry. So yes. again, I'm I. We get weekly reports from the MCOs. Um, most of them are focused on the um, dental subcontractor claims um, and and appropriateness of generating the wrap. Um, there are different, I think, places on where that stands, but I, I know that the work is ongoing um, and hopefully improving because I do see reports where they've done projects um, and uh, the claims are coming through and the encounters are coming through. So um, again, I think it's can sometimes be down at the provider level on resolving specific um, issues with the provider level, but I think we've made some um, some good movement on just generally the dental subcontractor claims. Okay. All right. One, one of the other things from last time's meeting, and I think it's interesting because uh, uh, Veronica, you got thrown under the bus by Jennifer Pop uh, at that. And I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but uh, uh, in, uh, in talking, Ms. Kaiser had asked the question about the, uh, the tool, the new functionality report about whether uh, uh, it would include uh, uh, recruitments and uh, Mrs. Uh, Jimerson uh, had said it was not listed as a data element. And uh, then uh, Mrs. Pop spoke up and said that she would take it back as an action item uh, to the Kentucky Health Net team and the encounter team and will provide that information to you so that you could share it with this committee. Uh, so kind of, uh, you know, welcome to being thrown under the bus, but uh, can you respond to that one, please? Yeah, so um, I, I know the report will um, show whether or not um, it is a, um, an adjustment, a void. So that information will be part of the report this, the, that the provider has access to. Okay. And uh, uh, so, so then the, the bus trip continued because then uh, in talking about uh, the, the tool, the encounter report, uh, you, you turned around and threw all the MCOs under the bus and, and uh, put them on the spot and asked them to tell what they uh, were doing with it. Uh, and, and let me say that... Uh, uh, my favorite out of that was uh, Beth Day with uh, Humana Healthy Horizons because she never promised you anything in a, in a page and a half of transcript. She never promised anything. Most everyone else promised they'd at least get back and make a report. Uh, so, so she's my favorite one out of that. Uh, but uh, uh, let's go through that if you, if you want to at this time because you asked them all to uh, uh, be able to come back and to make a report as to whether or not they were using uh, uh, the tool is what you called it two or three times. So it's, it's the, uh, uh, the encounter report that uh, has the new functionality, including how to search, view, and pull MCOs encounters directly from Kentucky Health Net. Uh, that's only available to MCOs. So that's, that's the tool when I'm talking sure. to it. Uh, yeah, just, but, just want uh, if, if I can, just one clarification. Um, uh, so right now there is an encounter report that gets generated by um, the department, which includes Gainwell, and gets sent to MCOs. And then we're still working on complete functionality of the Kentucky Health Net uh, supplemental report. The MCOs get their, uh, they all of their functionality will be available um, in an end of April release. Um, so there still are some pieces to the Kentucky Health Net, but at 
you are correct to say that there is a report going weekly to each of the MCOs, and I think it would be wonderful to hear from them, um, you know, continuing how they um, are utilizing that. Okay, so the bus continues on its route here, and uh, let's see what we got. Uh, we started out with Jeremy Randall with Anthem Lifetime. Uh, and he said that they were piloting with a few FQHC. So maybe if he's on here, he can update that report. Mike, Jer this is Sean from Anthem. Uh, Jeremy's unable to be here today, but uh, I'll get that answer for you and get back with you. Is that okay? Okay. And... Uh, Next up was uh, Becky Markham with uh, uh, Aetna, and uh, she did a little bus driving and, and put it over on Brian Wagner, who was not there. So uh, uh, is Brian on here to bring us up, or uh, Becky, can you update your report? I don't, can you hear me? This is Becky with Aetna. Right, you were going to verify uh, his knowledge of the report and uh, how he was using it. He said he had not been using it, but he was going to. Okay. And then uh, again, Beth Day with uh, Humana uh, Healthy Horizons. Uh, I've already bragged on Beth for, for not promising to do anything, but uh, uh, can you, uh, do you have a status update for us, Beth? Is anyone from Humana on the line? This is Kathy Stevens. I will, um, I, I don't have that status. Uh, Beth would be the one that had that, so I apologize, but I can send an email back to Aaron and um, if that's okay, and Aaron, if you can share it with the TAC. Okay. Uh, it, it's actually Beth, I was struggling to get off of mute. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I'm Never sorry. I, was, I have been having, having technical difficulties with Zoom on my microphone for the past two days, so I apologize. I think we've all experienced that. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> my goodness, yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that the most recent update that we have with our health plan is that we have an edit in place now so that anything that's going to be a taxonomy or an MPI mismatch with the state NPL file, those are going to actually come back to you as rejections. So we are not going to have any of the um, where you're actually going to have a claim paid and then subsequently down the road you would have uh, any kind of notification from the health plan that there had been an error that then has to be reworked on your part. So we're Open to alleviate a little heartburn that we might have had around that uh, after the transition from care source. Um, and it did also just want to remind everybody that we are in full swing having moved the behavioral health piece over from the um, behavioral health team and that's in-house now with our provider engagement team. So typically you'll find that the same representative that you've been reaching out to for your medical needs, you're going to reach out to for your behavioral health team needs. So we're hoping to uh, make a nice one-stop shop for you guys as we uh, realize how critical it is for the medical and behavioral health pieces to kind of work hand in glove together for people's overall total well-being. Thank you. Uh, Shelly Fife with Passport had promised to follow up with their encounters team and to let us know. Shelly, are you on? I am. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Awesome. So I, I did meet with the encounters team. They are aware that that is out there, but as Ms. Cecil stated earlier, there are some components missing, so they prefer working off of the weekly reports they receive. All right. I have Johnny Akers with WellCare. Uh, he had ID uh, Robin Ray as being WellCare's lead on encounters and promised to call him and ask for clarification on the use of the tool and will let us know, but only if he contacted him back by the time that his report was due later on the agenda. Johnny, you wanna update anything there? Uh, yes, Mike, can you hear me okay? Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah, so Robin did get back with me and uh, he said he uses the current weekly report that contains all the threshold rejections at the individual claim level. Um, so that's the report he uses because it is more detailed as, is, as has already been referenced uh, than the current Kentucky Health Net report. Is that the parallel report that you uh, talked about that you all were using back then? Yes. The last meeting? Okay. Yes. All right. And Chris Burns with United, uh, who was going to follow up with the operation team and let us know what uh, he found out. Chris, are you on here? Hi, Mike. This is Angela McGraw with United Healthcare, and Chris is not on the call, but I will certainly follow back up with Chris and get that information to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And that's Thank that's you. all the uh, MCOs. Uh, yeah. was Mike, somebody this else is got something? Beth? This is Beth with Humana. I'm so sorry. I got so frazzled for with the whole situation with my microphone that I went ahead and jumped in with my entire update. And yes, uh, we are using the uh, encounters uh, report on our side of things. We are using that along with the other reporting information that we do get from the state. So um, just to let you know that we did clarify that and, and I apologize for just throwing it all out there right there in the middle. Oh, I, I thought that you were just continuing the excellent report you did from last time, to just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's, okay. it's been a struggle with me on the Zoom. I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. Uh, right. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes, can I sir. ask something of the MCOs pertaining to that? Go ahead. I would just say for anybody who said they're going to get back with information, uh, please make sure you include everybody on the committee and uh, myself uh, and Teresa Cooper, just so we can help track that as well uh, for the committee as the assigned staff members from KPCA for this committee. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, you send it to everyone who's on the committee. That'd be uh, Rainer Mullins, Yvonne Agan, Mike Cottle, Barry Martin, and Chris Kaiser. Okay, Rainer, did you have something you were wanting to say? No, no. no. Okay, you, your square lit up there. I thought maybe you were, had something. I apologize. Uh, technology strikes again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Veronica, that's all the MCOs uh, on that. Does uh, okay? Let's see. Let's then go on to the update regarding return to in-person TAC meeting, uh, which is item four B, and that's just requesting a status uh, update from the last meeting. I'll take that one. Um, Medicaid has just recently got all the equipment installed from my understanding. So at your next meeting in May, we will um, hopefully have all of that up and running and functional so we can vote uh, at your next meeting if you want to stay virtual or return to in person. Okay, all right. So we'll uh, wait until then to make that decision. Is that right? Till the May meeting? Yes, sir. That's my understanding to make sure we okay. have everything up and running properly. Good, good. Thank you, then. You're welcome. It does not appear on here, uh, and we do not have a other old business category. Uh, um, but let me ask about this. Uh, we talked and have talked several times about the status of uh, action on the uh, MAC request reference payment for multiple same day visits. And uh, we had a, a pretty good discussion last time, uh, Ms. Cecil, from you uh, uh, about what was happening and you were going to uh, have an update for us as what progress had been made uh, for this meeting. Uh, will you be able to address that? Just to say that that's uh, ongoing. Um, we are working on it and uh, getting information about it. We're working with um, Myers and Stauffer, who does our rate setting. Um, and um, so we've been having some internal meetings. We're not quite to the place where I think we have a clear understanding of its impact to Kentucky. Um, 
but uh, certainly would, you know, um, support uh, maybe putting something on old business um, on the agenda so that I can provide an update. Okay. All right. So uh, we'd like that to be made a uh, uh, permanent agenda item. Uh, Noel, if you could convey that to Teresa, would appreciate it. So it takes us down to 500 new business uh, announcements from the MCOs. We can go back through the list if you all uh, uh, would like to address any things you didn't address earlier. Uh, for Humana, uh, who's going to speak for them today? Hey, this is Beth. Uh, just to reiterate that we we do have uh, an edit in place now, so that the front end rejections will occur whenever there's a mismatch on the the MPIs or taxonomies that are billed on the claims, so that that will uh, alleviate any kind of erroneous claim payment that uh, requires any rework for the group. So we're excited to have that uh, now that we've uh, transitioned. It, it had been a little bit of a change from what you were experiencing at CareStar. So we're back to uh, having that actually report to you on the front end. Um, and we do have the behavioral health uh, provider engagement being handled by the medical provider engagement reps so that you'll have more of a one-stop shop for any of the needs around that. And that seems to be going well. Uh, the introductions and educational seminars that we're doing with each of our assigned groups uh, are in full swing and we're hoping to have those finished uh, by the end of the quarter and uh, it, there is also a map on the website for humana.com that shows who the assigned reps are for each county and it does break out the special assignments for instance I handle all of the clinics for KPCA it's not handled by county so that you do have one face to deal with for all of your needs on that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well care. Mike, I have uh, one update. We have a new CEO for Well Care of Kentucky, Corey Ewing. Uh, he's a native of Northern Alabama and he has over 20 years of healthcare leadership experience. Most recently, he served as the Chief Operating Officer for Centene's Indiana Health Plan. Uh, prior to that, he spent over 15 years in hospital administration. He served as the CEO for two regional medical centers with community health systems. And Corey loves fishing in his spare time. So we got a lot of good fishing spots in Kentucky. Bill Jones is still with us and Bill is serving as senior vice president of market. So uh, you will have an opportunity as Corey uh, settles in to his role uh, in Kentucky and he'll be working out of our Louisville office. So he'll be out and about, uh, you know, in uh, upcoming uh, months uh, connecting uh, with our providers. So uh, we welcome Corey to Kentucky. Great. Okay, uh, Etna. Good morning, it's Becky again with Etna. Um, I just wanna let you know that Brian said that he prefers to work on those weekly reports instead of using the um, the, the website or that link. So he works his reports weekly. And then what we have going on with Etna is we have uh, lots of training opportunities going on. Um, on March the 10th from 11 to 2, we have a Welcome to Sky program for our providers. And it occurs um, every Thursday, every second Thursday of every month. And then on March 17th, new provider orientation from 10.30 to 12, and that occurs every third Thursday of each month. And all this can be found on our website under the events page for, for more information and links. And that's all Edna has. Thank you. Anthem? Hi, this is Rachel. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, just a couple of items to share today. Um, last month, we conducted some additional outreach to providers in response to um, DMS's invitation for PCPs to participate in the research study on how MCOs and providers can collaborate to improve quality 
of care for our members. Um, the communication was posted to our website, but we also wanted to ensure that we um, engaged with certain provider groups just to make sure they were aware of it. Um, next, we have three provider education webinars. Um, these are coming up beginning in April. They have been posted to our website. Um, two sessions are gonna be held for each one. <clears throat> The events include a webinar on 2022 annual coding updates. Um, that's gonna be held April 13th and 19th. Um, social determinants of health, that will be May 3rd and 19th. <clears throat> and then um, a diabetes management webinar, and that's on June 9th and June 21st. Providers can register on the Provider Training Academy page of our Anthem Kentucky um, Medicaid provider website. This can be found under the resources tab <clears throat> from the website's main homepage. Uh, and then the last item, this is also published in a March 1st provider communication that went out, um, posted on our site. Uh, it's about a UTI urinary tract infection toolkit um, that Anthem Kentucky Medicaid has put together um, just as an effort to support the health of our members. Um, these toolkits are gonna be sent to select members who are identified as having been seen in the ER for a UTI. Um, the kits include test strips and instructions for use if the member is experiencing symptoms, um, a reusable water bottle to encourage plenty of water intake and keeping hydrated, um, as well as just basic information and guidance for members on when to seek care. And that's, that's what I've got today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Melina, Shelly, would that be you? Yes, sir. So okay. I would like to announce that we're happy that we've started a value added benefits program. We're calling it Healthy Rewards. It's for all of our beneficiaries. This program will reward pediatric and adult members when they complete annual preventative health exams, screenings, immunizations, and follow-up care. We also offer two ways for the members to claim this re reward. They can either go online and do it, or they can contact customer care. We've also sent out a provider notification explaining how to dispute claims denied for incarceration reasons via evidence that the patient was not incarcerated for the date of service. And if anybody needs it, I can send the link and all requirements that we're asking for. All that right. would be it for Passport. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, this is Dr. Cantor. I'm CMO for United. Our update is that our COVID vaccination incentive is going to continue for the remainder of the year 12 to 1231-22. And that is a $100 gift card to CVS or Walmart if the member receives two doses of the Moderna or Pfizer or the one dose of the j and it does not, it's not for the boosters, it's for the full vaccination for the primary series of vaccinations. That's my update for United. Okay, and, and let me say this, thank you to all the MCOs that are providing uh, uh, in COVID uh, vaccination incentives, and thank you to the department uh, that provided us that in a succinct uh, one-page list. Uh, we certainly at MCHC have used that and distributed that uh, uh, to uh, uh, people that potentially could benefit from it. Yeah, hey, I'd like to add one thing. I think uh, I think the MCOs and DMS should relay that throughout the state. Uh, on the weekly Wednesday noon COVID calls, uh, there's been a lot of questions uh, about incentives for the vaccines. And I don't think some people in public health know that there are MCOs are offering incentives for the vaccines. Uh, I appreciate that suggestion, Barry, and we'll, we'll definitely reach out to our sister agency. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Good to hear the MCOs start talking about chronic care management. <laughs> We've dealt so much with COVID. Uh, those items are on the back burner. It would be nice to get those back up the uh, front line. 
All right, the next thing on the agenda is recommendations to the MAC. Is there any recommendations this time? There are not being any. Next item is confirmation of, uh, which is uh, 5C is confirmation shared to attend the MAC meeting will be held on March 24th at 10 a.m. Uh, as chair, I will be able to attend that meeting. Also, as chair, I failed to attend the last meeting, and I'd like to apologize to the members uh, of the TAC for that. And the uh, only excuse I have is that I decided that my employees shouldn't have all the time off for COVID themselves. So I uh, came down with it myself and had to take my time off and uh, was uh, somewhat under the weather uh, at the time of the meeting. But I have uh, recovered. Uh, the only thing I have a problem is I can't remember anything. And after telling my employees that, they immediately all remind me of the raise that I promised I was going to give them right before I got sick. Uh, that having been said, uh, the next meeting is uh, under 5D, uh, which is May 5th at 10 a.m. at uh, 1230. And uh, uh, one other thing I noticed in there is uh, Mrs. Geis had promised last time to give us an update about the regulatory changes uh, to uh, make the time in which to finalize report for FQHCs and RHCs and so forth uh, consistent at, at three days rather than the one day that it is now. Mrs. Geis, are, on, are you on here? And can you give us an update on that? Uh, I can tell you that uh... And yes, sir, I am on here. Um, I can tell you that our uh, regs are still being, uh, well, the overarching policy is not to submit a reg unless uh, during the legislative session, unless there's an absolute need on that. So we're, we're still planning to align those timings. Uh, we don't anticipate being able to do so uh, uh, to file those regs until uh, later this year. Uh, it's one of several that are waiting for us to be able to file. Uh, you said later this year, do you have an approximate timetable we could look at that again? Um, well, let's see. I'm trying to think. I, d I don't um, know. I would say the earliest would be March, April, uh, May. So okay. I might have another, I might have something a little bit more to tell you in May when you have your next meeting. Okay, we'll just put that back on the agenda uh, for May and, and see where we are then. Is that all right with you? Yes, sir. I'd be happy if you put it on the agenda. That helps me remember to update my uh, response to you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, so, Noel, if you'll take care of that, we'd appreciate it. Uh, I usually ask, and I failed to at this time. So, uh, uh, Veronica, is there anything else you would like to say? Oh, thank you, Mike. Um, gosh, there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, you know, Medicaid uh, continues to monitor legislation. Uh, that affects the program. Um, there are several, I think, in the pipeline. Um, so that adds to the additional duties, we are, the day-to-day -day that we already have right now. Um, I, I did want to um, touch on the regulation. The, um, it, it is an item, agenda, regular agenda item on the MAC agenda. Um, and um, we're, we are working to make sure that it's aligned across all providers. And so that, that also is, you know, just a little bit more of a, um, a larger task than just doing it for the FQHC. So we're just trying to make sure all the language is the same, which means that we're updating, potentially are updating more regs than um, intended. And also that um, I shared that, um, you know, we have, uh, if you count emergency and ordinary regs, we have about 60 somewhere in the pipeline, either being drafted, currently filed and going through the, uh, the public process um, or going through the uh, internal process that we have to go through, which is pretty intense on its own. 
Um, so, uh, you know, Medicaid has a lot, um, a lot of regulations that um, have, you know, potential changes to it. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think of, um, you know, any other uh, immediate program um, impacts or changes that would be beneficial. Uh, you know, we just continue with the um, CDC um, relaxing mask mandates, you know, we just, we want to continue, I think, encouraging vaccinations um, and appreciate the work that the FQHCs and, and the RHCs and all the primary care providers do um, to make sure that, you know, we're getting our population vaccinated and boosted. Um, so appreciate you all doing that work. Um, but that's probably, I don't, I don't think I really have anything else right now to, to share, but thanks for the opportunity. Okay, for the committee mem members, is that any other questions? Barry? I'm good. Okay, Chris? Yes, sir. Yvonne? I'm good, thank you. Rainer? Unanimous. All right, good deal. Uh, motion to adjourn then. So moved. All right. Yeah. All favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Thanks. blessed day. Bye, y'all. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Have a great day.